This video is sponsored by Printeek. First up here is my model, Sarah, and she is gonna be my favorite model. So I don't have to wear a mask. She's always on time. Oh, hell no! What um, is this? It, Sarah, she's my, I just put it together right now. I bought her for- Why were you gonna tell me that you got her? Um, I, I was gonna tell you, but Sarah, look, look, her? Her, her arms move. What? Her arms move. So do mine, you wanna see how they move? <laughs> but what is this? It's gonna be great for my tutorials, oh, you know? Okay, so you don't need me. Have fun cooking him dinner. <laughs> He's a picky eater. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. And I got her because I don't wanna always have to call a model or DM a model on Instagram, hey, can you come in? Because people don't wanna be a subject in like a tutorial. They wanna actually do a photo shoot. Sarah's always down for tutorials. So I could do lighting tutorials and I could practice my own lighting so I could make my photography better. So I think that was a good investment. Okay, modifiers. The 59 inch Zeppelin. The Zeppelin is my staple modifier. It's 59 inches of pure soft light goodness. I love it because of the light quality, but also it looks so freaking impressive in the studio. We here I have the Joel Grimes Beauty Dish. This is the Joel Grimes Beauty Dish. I use it mainly for waist up shots and tighter portraits. It gives me a more specular light than my other modifiers. And also I love that it collapses down like a traditional softbox. Got more strip boxes. I love using strip boxes for hair light, kicker light. Are we salsa dancing with it? All right, this is my, probably my favorite modifier, most versatile modifier. This is the, I believe the 36, 36 inch rapid box from Westcott. This is the one I like to use on location. The reason why I'm using all Westcott uh, strobes, this is the FJ400. I like using the Westcott strobes because they have a universal trigger. And as you know, actually with Fuji, Canon, Sony, Nikon, and the trigger is universal. And this is a necessity for anyone in a studio. This is just my like little assistant cart where I can put my camera down, make an adjustment, come back. I keep like accessories here, things that I might need. I got a V flat from V flat world. I also own some V flats from V flat world. Low key, these are essential for studio work, especially when you want to bounce light or more importantly for me, since I've got a bunch of white walls, prevent light from bouncing around. Um, behind Sarah is <laughs> whatever. Behind Sarah, I have my backdrop. So I got this. This is from Impact from B and H Photo. Amongst three backdrops, the only problem with this backdrop setup is that you need at least two people to put it up. So I mean, one person can do it. It's just not that easy because one side has gears on it. It has to be perfectly aligned. And these are nine foot paper backdrops. The only thing I don't like about this setup is that the roll sometimes keeps spinning when you're trying to roll it down using the chain. So you may want to clip something at the end of each roll to add weight to it. And over here I have a second station because I do have a lot of Woo! space. Look, she's so cute. Mm -hmm. What? Hey, mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. Two photography station. That was very strategic. I kept that one, my main setup, where there was more room in the studio so I could shoot with a telephoto lens. This one, I wanted to do my, like my little vintage area, but I could also use a 10 foot backdrop. Um, so I got this from Franklin Backdrop. They come closer to me because the mic probably won't pick me up. It's the textured background. I love these backgrounds. I love them. They look so good, especially when light hits them. And this light right here, I get a lot of questions about this light. Um, this is a Mo Richardson light, and this is a really bright spotlight. It gets really hot. You could use it as a freaking heater. It gets really hot, but I love this light as a backlight, either a hair light or just a prop in a photo. Alrighty, here is my collaboration area that I have yet to use. Uh, an Amazon vanity. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And this is also purchased by Diana. This is a vanity like mirror. Amazon, yeah. It has like three different lighting systems. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. doesn't know how to use it, as I, you can yeah. see. But this is great because I, I want to be able to do collaborations with makeup artists and hairstylists and, you know, things are kind of complicated right now, but hopefully I'm going to be able to do that soon. Got this chair also from everything from Amazon here. This is an Amazon built studio. And here I have the most wonderful woman in the world. As you see, Diana, uh, when we were in Turks and Caicos. And by the way, let me talk about these prints really quick. Out of all the places that I've had my photos printed in the past, I've gotten the best quality prints 
using printy. All the portraits that I have hanging in my studio, I got printed on metal. And these metal prints are not etched or printed on metal sheet. They are made with a process called dye sublimation where it infuses the ink into the surface of an aluminum sheet using a combination of heat and pressure. And here's a quick tip for you. If you want to print out a portrait on metal, choose the white finish. I also recently just printed out some family portraits that my friend took and these canvases are gorgeous. The colors, the texture, the heavy duty frame, you have to get your photos printed here. And if you use the coupon code 20 Manny, you're gonna get 20% off. I ended up buying a couch. I feel like this gives like a cozy, like a cozy look to the studio. Also, if like anyone brings like their boyfriend or their friend or the makeup artist or whatever, they can chill here, kind of watch the show, the photo shoot, or just kind of hang out. I, I like this. This is Diana's idea. I might bring my boyfriend and have him sit there. You're gonna bring your boyfriend to sit here? <laughs> So the most important part of my studio was the flooring. The flooring in here was old. It was creaky. I just I couldn't do it, and it was old. That old orangey floor. Yeah. So you I needed spent, a better aesthetic. Yeah, better, way better aesthetic. So I spent thirty five hundred dollars. It hurt, especially when you're just first moving in. But it was totally worth it. One hundred percent. Change up the game. Yeah, it changed everything. The studio now looks it looks good. It doesn't look like a like a cheap store. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pimp juice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what can I give <laughs> you? Everyone needs something like this. This is where the model can see themselves as you're taking pictures, so they can check themselves out as you're taking pictures of them, and also have a fan, uh, which is great for creating movement in the hair. I just did a shoot using this. Um, such a clutch little tool. It's 50 bucks on Amazon. The stuff that I regularly regularly use in a studio, like all my batteries for my strobes. I have my strobes. I keep everything here just so it's like easily accessible. I have my speaker, my JBL Flip 3, always have music going on in the studio so it creates a good vibe. There's no awkward silence or anything like that. So, and it gets people in the zone, like moving for, uh, for modeling. So, Let's see how it, does, how it does with Sarah. See what it does for her. All right, here is the office area, not like done up or anything. Um, all I did was get the walls painted and you see the lighting is trash in here. But you know what? I don't care. So here is um, Diana bought me this from Target. This is like my little charging basket where I keep a lot of the cables and stuff the like that. The baskets to charge. are from Target. The shelf yeah. is from Amazon. Yeah. Uh, this is where I charge all my batteries for my LEDs, my strobes, um, and some like accessories and like props and stuff like that. My 30, I think this is a 34, 36 inch wide screen uh, monitor that I plug into my my MacBook when I'm here. Well, oh, who got you those oh, shoes? Oh, yeah, you know, wifey did, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Okay, here I have a fully standing desk. Honestly, this is one of those investments that I just don't think twice about. For those long editing sessions, being able to stand up when my lower back starts to hurt is so clutch. This chair from Office Max, one of the best chairs I've ever used. I have an extra table here for someone that like, well, this is meant for like my editor. When I have an editor here to help me with uh, with editing and things like that. Nice chair you have for them. That's actually <laughs> for the shoots. <laughs> this uh, I got a, my bunch my camera bags. I have another picture that I have to hang up. She cute. Yeah, she kind of cute. You know. She cute. And I, you know, I got my other stuff there. This is uh, for our daughter. Yeah, my daughter when she's here, she can just chill on her iPad. You know, while Papa works. This is where he locked me away when he photographed <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> We have a bathroom. Nothing to see here. Here is my ghetto kitchen area. I'm just happy I have it. So uh, this is in a microwave. I got a mini fridge. I've got, you know. Coffee maker? Coffee maker. I have all the necessities in here. I put no effort into like making it look nice. All right, and that concludes the studio tour. Hope you liked it. Diana was a huge, huge part of putting everything together helping me with literally everything because i i'm not good with anything but photography that's all i'm good for that's literally all i'm good for she chose the color she chose everything in here in terms of the, like the aesthetic and i think it looks i think it looks pretty good not too shabby for a first timer nope. what do you think i think it's amazing and let's go let's go and you're staying